Welcome to the Productivity Lovers Podcast, episode nine. I, I love clappers, by the way. You know they what? Make, They're fun. Totally make me happy. <laughs> and I fully agree that we must do things that make us happy. So. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Productivity Lovers Podcast, the podcast about how to become more productive in your work and home environment. The Productivity Lovers Podcast is brought to you by Chris Scrott, a certified professional organizer and deadly, a digital productivity coach. Buckle up and enjoy the show. Hi, Devly. How are you? I am fine. I'm fine, except there is a leak in my basement, but I am fine. How are you? <laughs> I know you've been dealing that with that for a little while. So uh, a little bit. The last, the last episode got a little noisy and loud in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> and some interruptions because of that leak, which has returned. <laughs> oh, I know. We got, to, we got to meet your husband live in person. <laughs> Life happens, right? Even when you're recording a live podcast, well, a re-recorded podcast, life still happens. So yeah, no, we had a whole podcast about how I had a terrible day around that. That's right. Wasn't that like episode three or four? Yes, I think it was. Chris is terrible, no good, very bad, horrible day. I think we called it. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, you came up with that title based on a children's book. But I Yes, from a children's book that I recall from back when I used to be a teacher. That was a very, very fun book to read. And we all have those kinds of days. They don't go away just because you become an adult. In fact, I think we get more of them. As we attempt this adulting thing, we get more of those days, but it's all good. It's all good. I forget that you were that you were a teacher. I was. I was. I did that for a little bit. Um, I did special special needs children for special education for just a teeny tiny bit. I didn't have my own classroom at that time. I was a student teacher, and then sort of you know partnering with another teacher, a more seasoned <laughs> or experienced teacher. And then I started working for a childcare company that sort of brought together companies and childcare in an emergency basis. So whenever there was an issue with childcare at home, they got to bring their kids with them to work and there was a childcare center just for them. So yeah, I was in there. I was with babies and toddlers and preschoolers and school age children, I, the, the gamut, the whole range. I know you you probably were so good at that job. I would have totally liked to leave my kids with you. (laughs) You know, I felt, I felt a certain responsibility. Now, back then I didn't have kids. I wasn't married. I didn't understand what it was like to have children. Mm -hmm. And so I felt a responsibility to these parents that a lot of times emergencies just, you know, they come up. It's not like a planned emergency. It's Mm -hmm. this, it pops up and you're frantic. You have to be at work for a meeting or something's crazy, now you have no childcare. And so some of these parents would walk in with their infants, you know, three months old, four months old, and they'd walk out crying. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand why. Like I'm, I have a degree, I have experience, I'm loving, I'm kind, why are you crying? Well, now, you know, fast forward many years later, I'm a parent myself, I completely understand those emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the time I did my very, very best to not only care for the child in the way that their parents would, but to also make the parent feel that it was okay. Yeah. In a situation that they cannot help. Yeah. They still have to go to work and they're getting the best care for their child, but that I also cared about them. And so I really, really made a point of, you know, I would call during the day. And the first thing I would say is, hi, it's Deb calling about, you know, whatever their child's name was. This is not an emergency. Everything is fine. I just want to tell you they're having a great day. Oh, yeah. So just, you know, those yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. Because I didn't understand why these parents were getting so upset. I'm like, yeah. what's wrong? Why are you crying? Yeah, I get it now. There's a whole other podcast about that. Which oh, you yeah. Probably, I mean, you have a lot more experience with that. Um, just kind of. And like even I just said, trying to get out of the house on time <laughs> with children. Like, how does yeah. that was just 
crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I totally agree. Yeah. It takes 20 minutes. I think the more people you have that you're trying to get out of the house, the more time it takes. Now I'm like, if you're ready, way outside. <laughs> like Don't even tell me. Just, just go by the car. Just stand yes. by the car and wait. Of elimination. And then, of course, like you get three of them outside and then one has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so somebody runs back in the house. And before you know it, it's like, I'm like, oh, my God, it's been 30 yeah. minutes and we're trying to get out the door. I remember yep. one time my brother sent me this like YouTube video and I probably, I don't know that I can find it, but if I can find it, we'll put it in the show notes. But it yeah. was about this guy, this comedian guy talking about uh, how adults without children leave the house. You know, they, they pick up their keys and they oh, go. Oh yeah, everything <laughs> is calm and cool and collected. <laughs> and people with children are like, you know, it's yep. like herding cats for sure. No <laughs> offense, but you know uh, I mean you know being productive when children are around especially younger ones or even not so much younger ones but those that are not teenagers yet and they're not taught they're sort of that tween in between yeah. sort of time where they need your attention and they need they their needs seem to be like huge and they need to tell you these things <laughs> in the midst of your trying to work. So that's a tricky, that's probably a podcast episode coming up. Soon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'll totally interview yeah. you about that. Uh, because <laughs> you're right. Cause they're like, cause I'm like, do you know where your shoes are? Do you know what you need? And like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And then we walk out the door. I'm like, where, I don't are, know your where, they are. <laughs> where are your shoes? They're like, I don't know. Where I don't know. Are. It's like, we just had this conversation. <laughs> I just, I just said to my kiddo the other day, I don't know is just not a really acceptable answer. Yeah, good. To, it's, it's a good way to say I just that. said it's not an acceptable answer because you do need to know. So I'm going to give you some time to think about it, which also gives me some time to just bring the temperature down. Calm down. Just like just calm it down. It's not that important, Deb. It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that but note, let's We're talk not talking about, about kids and productivity today. Oh, well, yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about something that really gets the you know, the blood blow, boiling, <laughs> boiling. What is it that I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, blood say? boiling. What is the, the blood, blood boiling. boiling? I'm Brazilian. Those BBs <laughs> those, are like, those co- yeah, <laughs> those phrases don't exist in those Brazilian. Those word combinations are really hard. So, <laughs> um, so what are we talking about today? We are talking about the Netflix show that features Marie Kondo tidying up with Marie Kondo and her KonMari method. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, Marie Kondo has been um, my uncle on a weekly basis for like years would send me uh, links to like Marie Kondo's articles about okay. you know, everything. He, he was a little bit obsessed with them, which okay. was okay because I loved it. Like whenever he saw something about Marie Kondo, he sent it to me and he was like, did you read this article? And I'd be like, <laughs> No, Uncle Steve, I did not read this article, but thank you so much. Hey, Uncle Steve. I loved, I loved to listen. I know I loved reading them, but I was like, yeah, Marie Kondo was like in everybody's mind, whatever I I went. And I would see if I, people said like, what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh, I have people organize. They'd be like, oh my God, do you know that Marie Kondo lady? Yes. Yes. Actually, they never remember her name. I don't know why they are. They're always like, they describe it in their own way. In their own way. But they never remember her name. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's Marie Kondo. <laughs> <laughs> that's who that is. Well, it was interesting because I, as you know, I haven't done hands-on organizing in forever. You know, I do it in my own house, of course. And, you know, I help my mom every so often. But I don't really keep up with the organizing stuff or shows or anything like that. And so watching the show was really interesting for me. Yeah, tell me what was was your perspective to it? Well, I have myself as the benchmark back when I did this kind of work. So I I would say to myself as I was watching, well, oh, wow, she's she's leaving them on their own to do these things she's telling them to do. Like, you know, you need to put take everything out of your closets and put them all in one spot and then go through them one by one. Whereas normally if that were me with my old clients, I would, I would be doing that with them side by side. Mm-hmm. I would not leave them alone to do that. And so <laughs> I'm pausing because I can, I can hear my husband talking off in the distance there, <laughs> another interruption while we record. Anyhow, um, I thought it was just really kind of strange that she left them there because normally my clients would feel overwhelmed and they would need a partner, 
a guide, someone to help talk them through a process or even just someone to bounce ideas off of like, you know, do you, do I really need this? Well, let's talk about that. How would you use that? When would you use that? When was the last time you used that? When can you foresee yourself using it again in the future with regularity? And I didn't see that happening. And yet the results were just amazing with her leaving them on their own. So I, it was hard for me to understand how that worked so well. I understand it's a show. Yeah. I know there are show producers. I know things are edited in a certain way. I get all of that. But I was just, I don't know. I just thought it was an odd way to do that. Were I you, oh, I mean, like what I hear you saying is like, were you curious on the validity of the process that she was using? I was surprised show? that one, her new way of new way of doing things, finding joy, sparking joy, things need to spark joy, that this was so well received by the couple she worked with and that they were able to use it and then benefit from it and find success, like big success. Yeah. So again, I know some of that is partly how it's produced and edited and I get that. Um, but they were really willing to sort of take on this new way of managing their, their items and their things. Yeah. Um, and it was successful because that's not always the case, you know, and as a former organizer, I would see clients struggle, like really struggle with letting things go, even if it was something that they had never used. Yeah. But they spent a lot of money on it. Yeah. And because of that, they kept it and no amount of coaching on my part or talking to me on, on any level would help them to let it go. And yet she gave them a direction. She left them to do the thing they needed to do and they did it and they maintained it. So it was yeah. just, it was a little tricky for me. Well, to I think when we meet that. people, um, I think when we meet people, there are a couple, like, I, I feel like there's a couple profiles to like people that mm -hmm. want to be organized, right? Sure. There is, uh, there's first the, people that can totally do it by themselves. They're like really organized, like mm -hmm. organization comes naturally to them. They just have been busy or they're, you know, sure. backlogged or they just like, you know, there's some reason why they haven't gotten around to it. They're busy at work or they're hanging out with the children mm -hmm. or whatever. So those people, they're like, they're messy in a way. And there's a lot yeah. of like, they're in a well-lived in home. Um, yeah. But left, left to their own device, they could they probably, could do it. Do the, like if they could take a few days off, they could just probably totally do the job themselves. Sure. They would love and enjoy it and whatnot, you know. Uh, I meet those people at the grocery store all the time and they're like, oh, <laughs> well, it could work for you. And I'm like, great. Okay. They would make horrible organizers, mind you, because they would be making people get rid of everything. Everything. <laughs> like, they're really good at getting rid of stuff and they're really good at maintaining their own home. And I think those people would actually make really good candidates for her show, right? Because, okay. um, you know, Marie Kondo wrote uh, two really popular books. If you don't know, people listening to the podcast, Productivity Lovers listeners. Yes. Uh, one was The Magic of Tidying Up, which was yes. her first real big best New York Times bestseller. Seller. Yep. And, uh, and in that book, she kind of walked people through their, you know, through purging their entire home in like no time, right? And then yeah. she wrote in the whole premise of the book is like, does it spark joy? And if it doesn't Correct. spark joy, throw it out. I'm a huge fan of that premise. Yes, I do and like that. that. And then in the second follow-up book uh, was called Spark Joy. Mm -hmm. And in that book, she went in detail about how to like fold things and organize things. Yes. A lot of how-to manuals on things like that. And honestly, she, you know- She also had children after- that first book, I he think somewhere in between. No, I think she had children after her second book. Oh, was it? Okay. Because I remember okay. thinking like, ah, I think she's going to have to write a retraction to one to at least the second yeah. book because it was like so detailed. I was like, nobody can live like that. So I think that like in the, um, in a sense, I was like, so, so, you know, the first kind of profile people that I just talked about, they totally could embrace Sure. The, my, the magic of tidying up and then there's the spark joy folding. You know, I sometimes like not that long ago, I was working with a college bound student mm -hmm. and she, she was like, can you Marie Kondo my drawer? And I was like, for <laughs> sure, I will Marie Kondo your drawer. And then I said to her after I was just like, hey, don't worry that you'll never be able to maintain this about oh. 
herself. Right? <laughs> and she laughed and she was like, and I was like, you know what? Find your own version of maintaining it. Right. So okay. Uh, okay. You know, the okay. follow up is always like, I get a bald up version of a picture from their drawer. And that's funny to me because I was like, yeah, nobody really close enough. That. <laughs> yeah, nobody needs that fold, like bald up is close enough to Marie Kondo style. So yeah, um, I think those people are like great candidates for the show. And then I think the people that sometimes like, you know, I specialize in working with people with ADHD. Yeah. So those people are not like organization is not in their, you know, in their DNA per se, yeah. like they struggle with the categories. Okay. It's just really hard. So um, they tend to be a little bit messier. And I think they need that, you know, body doubling or accountability yes. that you're talking about. Right. Yes. Uh, and I think like there is, there is a, you know, there's a brain-based challenge that kind of goes with the disorganization and executive function. And there's a whole industry that like, mm -hmm. you know, helps people with executive dysfunction to be more organized. And then there's, I think the, th there's a third profile. The third category. Okay. And I think in the third profile, I see the people with like their emotion to the stuff, their emotional attachment yeah. is so huge, right? Yes. Because it because there is that thing that you just talked about, like it costs good money. Yes. Or long, you and I in the pre-conversation talked about a client that had lost her husband and yes. how was to get rid of his stuff. It's and difficult. there is the, you know, there is like the, you know, it's 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 pretty, it's still useful. I want to find a place for it. Yes. There is the yeah. like, I want it to go for to a good home. I don't just yes. throw it yeah. away. Right. There is like, and then that category, I feel like people need permission. Yes. Like, I mean, they literally call and we send somebody to go over there so we can say, yes, in fact, it is okay. It's okay. Let go of this thing. Uh, but lately um, I was doing a podcast with somebody else. Yep. And I think what came up for me during that podcast was that like uh, in organizing, we're helping people let go, not of the stuff but like of what they thought they were going to be, mm. right? You were like, you're yeah. letting, they're letting go of like who they are or the person that they thought they were going to be. Who they used they, to be. They used to, oh, they used to be is so huge, right? Yeah, so they used so to many be. people that have to let go of who they used to be because it doesn't fit anymore, yeah. right? You're living a different lifestyle. Correct. And so, it not just doesn't fit you physically, yeah. but it just doesn't fit you mentally and where you are in life right now. Yeah. And so I think the third profile also has a hard time like doing it yeah. by themselves, right? Because they like, they need permission. If you're doing it alone, there's nobody's permission. So um, well, were you not surprised that this couple that she worked with had some, a little bit of marital strife and two young kids? Yeah. Well, I mean, their, you know, their, their house was very cluttered and it was really small. So small home, lots of things. Yep. No storage, no storage, and then navigating that, but also then doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. But what I what I really loved was that they were open and receptive to what she was trying to impart. Even though I would have done it differently, were I to go in and help others, you know, organize their space, I loved that they were open. It it was new and foreign and different to them, but they were open to it. And I think maybe that helped them to do it. They just thought, okay let's just do it the way she says and let's see how it works. Yeah. They were just right. And I think maybe they were ready. Being, they were ready. Exactly. So yeah. sometimes it's timing, all the stars align, everything comes together and you're ready, even though what you're hearing might be strange. Like when they were thanking their clothes before they folded them. Yeah. You know what? Right? I, I honestly, I say, I do that all the time. Do you really? Yeah. It's like a weird, it's like a weird thing I learned from Marie Kondo. I, I always huh. like, before I throw this thing in the trash, I'm like, Oh, thank you, glass case, for holding my glasses. I really appreciate all the joy you brought. But now wow. I don't know. Okay. And that's on like a, just a usual thing that now that you've learned that from her, you just sort of do that? Yeah, I just kind of okay. absorb that. And you know huh. what? I find that it's super helpful. Like people actually, okay. like whenever they get to think the thing that they have to get rid of, they just feel better, you know? Like well, maybe it makes it easier to let go. So there's probably a little bit of psychology brewing in there or sort of tooling around there. Um, I don't think I have ever thanked an article of clothing. 
I have said things like, wow, I love how this looks on me. (laughs) Thank you for fitting me so nicely. I don't know. Maybe time you get rid of something, try it just to see how I feel. Okay. I I might. I mean, I thought that was one of the, the more interesting parts of the show, you know, sort of, you know, thanking the item, even if you're keeping it, thanking it for serving you well. Um, I often want to thank people. Mm-hmm. I don't think about, you know, thinking inanimate objects or mm-hmm. articles of clothing. But if if that helps you to either maintain your space in a more organized way or helps you to let go of it so someone else can make use of it, then by all means, do it. So to me, nothing is too strange or odd or out of the box no. if it's going to help you achieve the goal you're trying to achieve. And Quite frankly, when I when I think about organizing a space, I know that if my space is organized for, for most of us, perhaps some creative people out there need a messier space, but for most of us, the environment is going to impact how we interact with it and how much we can get done and vice versa. Yeah. So if the brain is feeling a bit cluttered with ideas and thoughts, the environment is likely to reflect that based on my own experience. So, you know, other people might see it differently, but from my own experience as an organizer, having a cluttered space does not help the mind be productive and vice versa, right? So to me, keeping the space organized and being able to maintain it in a regular, consistent fashion means that you're more likely to get more things done and the right things done. So your productivity would go up. So for me, organized space goes with productivity, even though I don't organize them anymore. So Marie Kondo just approaches it from a a different way. I I really loved how the couple at the end seemed to kind of rediscover themselves and each other. They went out on a date (laughs) afterwards. You know, it seemed to do something not just for their space, but for them as individuals and as a couple. And then they were incorporating the kids in on the organizing and showing them how to fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it became a family event. It did. And honestly, I mean, if you want kids to learn how to do things, you've sure. got to do it with them. So I saw some real positives. I just I just wasn't sure if they would really, now the cameras are gone, the show is over. Is that space really maintained? My professional experience is that people yes. find a organized version of themselves, right? It's okay. never going to be like, I call like the end product, like the Pottery Barn catalog. I love yes. the Pottery Barn. I would love yes. to live in the Pottery Barn. Me too. <laughs> However, like they set that stuff up to take pictures. Like nobody lives there. Correct. Okay? So I think at some point people have to find like a normal level of messiness that was there before. But they, I don't know, yeah. most of the time they don't revert back to that original very first time you go there, which I'm sure yeah. like if you went back, they still be messy. I'm sure they'll have things on the counter. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. that things will be out of place. They'll probably have some piles in the garage, but I think they have a lot of awareness and they were ready. So I loved they were ready. I love that part about it. Yeah, uh-huh. they were ready. Well, uh-huh. what if, you know, I think I, I think about the moments that happen in life, the unexpected moments, the emergencies. We started talking about that at the beginning of the show, yeah. the things that pop up. So here you are with a set of routines. You've been, you know, con married. You've got your space organized. And then you have a death in the family or mm-hmm. you're traveling and you didn't think you would be. It's an emergency sort of a trip. You know, when those moments happen, it's then we the truth of your system or lack of one starts to reveal itself. Right. Yeah. Are you able to regroup when when things settle down and go back, or do things become worse and mushroom into something that you was worse than what you started with? So, I I wonder if you know taking every single thing out of your closet at the same time. And putting them in a pile and devoting an hour or two or 10 to that one pile is the right, and I say right, meaning right for you, right for me, right for the average person, because I, I can foresee that becoming overwhelming. Yeah, right? no, I, I right? think this is the part where we talked about the, the things about Marie Kondo. We don't love so much. Well, <laughs> and I think that like, I think. I, and I want to say, I think it's like on the third episode where there is a woman, I would say she has hoarding tendencies, right? Because okay. every, it okay. felt like every part of the house had an abundance of clothing and there was a lot of stuff in there. And there was like, you know, there was like Christmas and all kinds of things in there. 
And she did make the woman take every single piece of clothing mm. she had in the entire house and pile it up in the bedroom. Okay. And the pile in the bed was like hitting the ceiling. And wow. like, I was, wow. in my, you know, I was like laying on the couch watching it, having anxiety for the woman because I was like, oh my God, yeah. she's never going to get rid of the, you know, she's never going to get through the pile. So did and she? So, no, the Marie Kondo goes like, uh, okay, I'll be back, go through the clothing. <laughs> and I was, like, hey. I was like, oh my God, she's not going to make it. But I assumed that there was a success story, which is the reason why they put, you know, they put it as an yeah. episode. And then she came back and the woman had sorted it through. The okay. show doesn't say how long it took. And then she, if she received yeah. any extra help or uh, how she went about sorting and like mm-hmm. trying on all of those clothing. But I think that part, uh, that part felt a little scary. And like my team, a couple of times, like when yep. Marie, Marie Kondo first started this, you know, like came out with the book, my team was like, maybe we can Marie Kondo you and then we can just do some, you know, Facebook <laughs> or like YouTube thing. And I was like, like my, my whole body reacted to it. I was just like, oh my God, can you imagine if I had to put all my clothing into one pile and make decisions about it? That would freak me out. That so I said, me out. no, thank you. I don't care about it. They were like, well, how about your books? And I was like, uh, even worse. <laughs> well, I think this really goes back to what you said earlier about the, the profiles. Yeah. The sort of characteristics of a person that would sort of match up with her style yeah. and her suggestions. There are going to be some minds and mindsets that will say, yeah, it's, it's strange. It's odd. I can do that. I'm generally organized. I'm going to try that. That might really work for me this time. Yeah, no. And there's plenty you know, of people that love that. And, and there are. So I think there's something to be said for trying something new, mm-hmm. something different, yeah. just to see if it would work. Because don't we always do that? So nothing that we ever tell a client is cookie cutter, yeah. right? We, we really try to sort of mold uh, or craft a set of routines that will work for that specific client. So if the KonMari method or Marie Kondo suggestions really spark joy in your brain, then, you know, have at it. Um, but I, w- I would say that for the most part, most the average person might, might find that some things are perhaps a, a stretch too far or just too hard to not just do and accomplish, but then that maintenance piece. You know, yeah. one of the things that we try to do when, when we're organizers and even as a coach, you try to impart skills that the client can then use on their own over time and really master right? so that you're not always needed in that way. You may still be needed, but in just, you know, perhaps for motivation, but the client, you're imparting a level of skills or a set of skills that they can use and easily use, reasonably well, we're trying to make use. them more independent of their clutter, right? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. So I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure that it would fit all the profiles you mentioned, but there are certainly some people who would gravitate towards yeah. it. So I, I enjoyed this episode that I watched. I forget the name of the episode. I think it's called the friend, the friend family. The name of the family was friend. So it was the friend family episode where she goes in and she works with the parents and their toddlers. And I love the, the way it ended. It was very happy. I really, I love a happy ending, uh-huh. <laughs> right? Um, I'm just not sure how reasonable it is to expect that sort of an outcome yeah. each time. And so I would love for people who are watching any kind of program like that, any kind of reality TV type show, particularly around organizing mm-hmm. and productivity to sort of understand that, you know, it, it is it is a produced program. Mm-hmm. Um, there are pieces that you're not seeing um, and yet you may get some of those results, but perhaps not all the time. Yeah. And I, and I think from a, from just a time management point of view, right. Cause I think, yeah. I think like that, like this week I'm working with a client, the one in her kitchen organized and I am the last person available on the schedule. So I'm like looking at okay. the description of all the things she's like expecting to get accomplished. Right. Yes. <laughs> wants all of her food replaced into canisters and she would like okay. all of the shelf lined. She and wants she, the home edit. <laughs> <laughs> then she wants all of the, you know, the cabinets organized and she expects it all to be done in seven hours. And I was like, yeah, no, that's like three days worth of work. Right. Which yeah. is why uh, you, you probably haven't done it by yourself. Right. It's because it's sure. a lot of work to do it in context of like and planning. Time. There's mm-hmm. some, there's some planning involved with that. And I think like there is a book 
uh, written about um, optimism and mm-hmm. how our human brain is ingrained to be much more optimistic about time mm-hmm. okay. than our logical brain, right? It's so that like, means we're wrong a lot. We're wrong all the time. <laughs> That's basically okay. the book said we're wrong all the time because your okay. brain tends to have an overly optimistic point point perspective to it that okay. just thinks like, oh, organizing the whole kitchen is just gonna take a couple of hours. Yeah, piece of totally, cake. I can totally do this. No big <laughs> deal. Which is my concern when Marie Kondo says like pull everything you have that is in one category and pile it up in the middle of the floor is that you probably only have a couple of hours, one before you yeah. lose interest or before something else yeah. happens. You lose interest, you lose momentum, you lose the motivation. Yeah. But I, you know, pr- on the flip side, after having done that once, after having taken out everything and put it in one pile, maybe you're more inclined to maintain it so that you never have to do that again. No, I disagree with you there. I don't know. I think that, like the possibility it's more the likelihood I'll take the over on this one okay (laughs) you end up with a big pile in the middle of your house that you like you look at it for a long time before (laughs) you get to deal with because one you're optimistic about how much time it was gonna take and two it's gonna take three times as long when it's in a big pile because it gives me anxiety at least and then then you have all the stuff that's left that you have to do something with and then nobody accounts for that. Like in the organizing, nobody accounts for like, Oh, what do I do with all this stuff after I'm done with it? Well, it, 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 it all takes time. So it's not just the pulling out of the items, right? It's not just the sorting through the items. It's not just saying, okay, this is my keep pile. and This is my donate pile. Now you have the donate pile or the trash pile or the I'm not sure what to do with pile and something still has to happen. Right. And that still takes time. It take, And it also takes mental energy. I think mm-hmm. sometimes we think about time as our physical energy, right? When am I most productive? When do I feel most energetic? And that is great. In fact, you should think about it in that way. But how you feel mentally <laughs> also yeah. comes into play and how things might drag you down. And for some of us, as we hold something, when we hold it, it's almost as if the memory is playing out in front of us, like an, in full color and the emotions and the, 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 the thoughts we had at that time are now filtering in front of us. And it can be trickier to let things go. It takes longer than we really do think, but you won't know that unless perhaps you've worked with an organizer, right? right? Because doing it on your own, you're not really thinking about it in those terms. So I think we do need to take into account a variety of things and to absolutely understand that some methods will work and some won't certainly try them, but a TV program is a TV program. Yeah, for sure. Right. So, So but I, I mean, I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I totally enjoy watching it. I did fall asleep a couple of times, but you know, uh, I was like, it was like watching work. I was like, "Eh." Uh, well, okay. I get that. (laughs) I probably watched it in the beginning and then I watched it in the end and it was like the middle. I was just like, yeah, it just feels like they're, you know, they're just going through the most. I got this. So, uh, so do you have a takeaway from the show? So my takeaway, just to kind of repeat what I said earlier is, you know, just because something is different or strange or new, a strategy, Mm -hmm. try it. It might work for you, but be realistic and be reasonable also, because maybe it won't. And that's okay too. That's all right. Um, And to find what is reasonable. So, you know, I think you and I both agree that taking everything out, every single thing and going through every single thing at the same time probably is not reasonable and can be extremely overwhelming, but maybe you decide you're going to try it. Okay. See how that goes. And if it doesn't work, move on, move on. Don't, don't try to, you know, sort of, you know, round peg, square hole it. Don't do that. Get going and move on. And do understand that a lot of these programs are, they are, they're helpful, but they're not necessarily real life, um, at least not real life over time. So try the new thing and see how it goes. And then, you know, move on if it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my takeaways from Marie Kondo, and this is not just from the show. I think this is like, I, you know, I've done book clubs on her book. Yes. And I, I've read all of my uncle's articles. <laughs> I have like had a lot of conversations with people about yes. her. 
I think like my takeaway in the positive way is that like, uh, I like the idea if something doesn't, doesn't spark joy and it doesn't yeah. bring joy into your life, it doesn't matter how much money you spent on it. Right. It doesn't matter who it's gave time it for it to go it's time for it. Like it consumes time and energy. Every time you look at mm -hmm. something and you have to think like, I don't like yeah. this thing. It's in my way. It's consuming your brain bandwidth. You should let it go. Yes. It will free up your time to do other things with it. And, um, and I think the level of extremeness that, you know, uh, yeah. that she advocates for is like, at some point you have to find your own level of normal yeah. in a way that honors who you are without you feeling bad that your drawer doesn't look perfect every time. Like, you yeah. know, I, I haven't folded underwear since I was 25. <laughs> <laughs> I just, no, nope. I mean, hope that's not yeah. TMI, but like, I just throw them <laughs> in the door and that just looks fine. You know, like some people like folding their underwear and I'm yeah. like, more power to you. Like that's not <laughs> the kind of time I spend. Like I literally yeah. just put them in the drawer and that, you know, I rummage okay. them in and I find one that I feel like wearing and that I'm good to go. But for someone else, maybe that is the one thing that they do that makes them feel like, oh, this is nice and neat. I want, I want all the underwear to be nice and neat, but everything else over here can just be good enough. Yeah. So I guess, you know, you pick the thing that matters to you the most. Yeah. My sock drawer is fairly organized. Who knows yeah. what? <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot about you today. <laughs> it was a good day to learn. About us. So anyway, do we, is there anything else we need to share with our people? Well, we are going to next time chat about a different program. Yes. Um, the home edit, which is so different. Um, so I hope, hopefully people will tune in to hear our thoughts on that. And of course, we'd love to hear what you guys think about Marie Kondo or the KonMari method. And if you watch her program, what you think about it, certainly feel free to tweet us, you know, reach out to us on social and let us know what you think. Yeah. Totally curious to see how, like, if you tried it, if you're using yeah. it, like, and if you were the extreme minimalist, like, are you still maintaining it? I'm always yeah. curious. That, like, and are you thinking your your clothing your yeah. your items are you thinking you your try things? that for sure try that one for sure i i am committed to at least trying it um and i will let you know how that goes <laughs> i'm gonna follow up on that because you can <laughs> start, like, as soon as we hang up you can like probably go try it <laughs> <laughs> i will try <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Productivity Lovers Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you later. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Productivity Lovers Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when we upload a new productivity podcast. For more tips and notes from the show, check us out at productivitylovers.com. Talk to you soon.